Hey guys, it's Kayla. So quilt batting can be kind of overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out. Let me preface by saying that if you're looking for something extremely specific for a specific type of quilt, you're better off just contacting a manufacturer and seeing what type of batting that they make that they recommend. That's going to be your best bet. I'm going to talk just kind of briefly on like the major types of batting and how they're used. And then I'm also going to talk about batting alternatives. And I'm going to hit on the pros and cons of each type. So one of the traditional types of batting is polyester. And it's more of a fluffier, um, you can get high loft and low loft. And I believe this one is a high loft. And I typically use these batting only for hand tied quilts. You can see the ties on the back. And then on the front, I made cute little X's. I don't know if you can tell. But it has more of like a slippery feel. So often when you're using these looser polyester battings, um, it's my preference not to use it on a machine because the machine will pull up bits of it through the top. That's called bearding. And so I kind of stay away from the polyester fluffier batting for machine quilted quilts. And then next you have just a regular 100% cotton batting. This works great for machine quilting. You don't want to wash it before you use it. It can pull the fibers. It kind of stretches. 100% cotton it shrinks slightly, like a good amount of shrink. So if you want like that traditional crinkly type of quilt, then 100% cotton is um, a better choice. It is a bit more expensive. When I use cotton, I do prefer to have a closer quilting stitch. Um, and by closer, I mean I want every part of the quilt to be quilted within four inches or so. And it is necessary to check your manufacturer recommendations to see how close of a stitch that you how far apart it can be from each other and then for my art quilts i prefer to use the cotton batting with scrim and the scrim is a stabilizer to where it's not going to pull the batting and like have saggy spots in the quilt and then there's a blend of cotton and polyester usually it is 80 percent cotton and 20 percent polyester that is going to be your most cost effective batting that is a store bought material that's specific for batting. I prefer to reach for this blend of the polyester, polyester and cotton because it's just cheaper than 100% cotton. So two that I'm not going to like really talk about very much is wool and bamboo and I think silk is kind of uh, an up and coming batting. I've not used any of those three so I'm not going to speak on them. From what I understand though if you're going to be using a wool batting you want to get the batting that is pre-shrunk because it does have a much higher shrink percentage than cotton and polyester. So if it's not pre-shrunk then you're going to have an extremely crinkled quilt unless that's the look you're going for and then another one that i never use because i don't use my domestic to quilt on is a fusible batting and a fusible batting is one that you would just make your quilt sandwich and then iron top and bottom and then your quilt is fused together and you don't have to pin baste so if you are machine quilting with a domestic machine and you hate pin basting then maybe look into the fusible okay so let's get into the alternatives of quilt batting so the first alternative is probably going to be the one that most people will argue about and that is actually not using any batting at all a quilt with no batting would actually be a great alternative for a summer quilt i know quite a few people that actually prefer to use no batting in baby quilts that way um it's just a lighter quilt Okay, so let's say that you want a lightweight quilt, but you want to use a layer in the middle. It's like some sort of batting. A great batting alternative would be a fleece sheet or a fleece blanket. So you know those rolls of blankets that you can find at Walmart, usually for about $3. My arms are outstretched. It's probably 60 by 60-ish. So it may, would make a great throw size quilt. I do wash these before I use them, this obviously would be used for a black or dark quilt. I do wash them before I use them just in case there's any type of um, dye left over so it doesn't bleed onto my quilt. I typically buy the white or light gray. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think that the shrink rate for these fleece blankets and the fleece sheets, unless they're pretty shrunk, would be higher than cotton. So. I just kind of err on the side of caution and 
pre-wash these. You could also use a cotton sheet or cotton yardage in the middle and that would be another great alternative for a lightweight quilt. Hey, it's Editing Kayla here. So if you do use either no batting or a very, very thin batting, it is going to make the quilting of your quilt look completely different than if you are using a thicker batting in between. It's going to look more just like regular sewing and less like quilting. This is more common during like the Great Depression era. They would have a quilt that is so worn out that it couldn't be repaired anymore and they would just use that as the batting and add another top and or bottom but it's a great way to reuse things and kind of give them a new life just in case you don't like throwing things out like I don't. I've never used an old quilt inside of a quilt but I have used an old blanket. One that's thicker than this fleece and it really does work great I really do recommend pre-washing just in case and maybe finding something that is white or very light gray. And the last option for cheap batting would be to use your batting scraps. So I never, ever, ever throw away my pieces of batting unless they are just too small. I don't really keep anything that's like smaller than five inches, but I have no problem piecing together a whole bunch of batting scraps of the same type and using that as, I call it a Frankenstein batting. You would just trim them straight and then run a zigzag down through it. And it really doesn't alter the way the quilt feels at all. So I would love to hear what your alternative batting is that you use or that you know that somebody uses. And if you disagree with anything I say, please leave it in the comments because I want this YouTube channel to be a place where somebody can come and look for information through the comments and be like, you know what, I use this and I hate the way it turned out. And so kind of be specific in what you used, what you liked, what you dis disliked. So anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video.